Hey guys, welcome back. I was thinking this weekend about what video I wanted to film and I realized how much I personally love makeup videos above and beyond everything else. That's just my bread and butter with YouTube. When a YouTuber that I like posts a makeup video, it's like stop everything I'm doing and I have to watch it. There's something so freaking soothing and zen and amazing about watching people apply makeup. I wanted to do kind of a dewy looking fresh face for spring makeup because I've just been feeling like so excited about spring which is so unlike me like I don't know who I am these days. So I got the idea to do this makeup look over the weekend like the same day earlier in the day I had painted my nails with this deep burgundy color and I was like damn it I wish that I had opted for kind of a more springtime appropriate nail, but whatever, you guys will deal. This is Deborah Lippman Single Ladies, but I should have just done like my trust fun Money Buys Happiness, which is sort of a pale pink. So I hope you enjoy this makeup video. Definitely let me know what kinds of makeup that you're wearing to transition into spring. So without further ado, get ready to see my makeup list face in three, two, one. So for me, the key to super dewy looking skin is sort of multi-fold. So I do think that adding an illuminizer in with your base, whether it's a foundation or a tinted moisturizer, really does help to bring some luminance to the skin. So I'm going to mix a little bit of the Josie Marin Argon Illuminizer in with my Juice Beauty CC Cream and Warm Glow. I opted for this because this also gives a very dewy appearance to the skin which is why when people say that they're oily or combo oily, I tend to think that people should avoid this product, but it works so well for people with normal to dry, very dry skin. The other little key, I think, is to use a beauty blender. And I've had one of these for a long time, and I tend to not use it that much just because it seems like such an extra step. I have been reaching for it more, and I love the finish that it gives to my skin. So what I'm gonna do to start is do a mix of these all over the face. I'm gonna do sparingly some concealing underneath the eyes and around the nose with my Studio 78 at Dawn Concealer, which has a very, very dry texture. And then I'm going to take some of my RMS Uncover Up in number 11 and kind of use this as sort of a light foundation. And then I'm going to work that all into the skin with the Beauty Blender and you'll see. I just feel like it gives such a dewy, moist look to the skin. I've kind of been foregoing doing an all over bronze and I've really been liking using the bronze kind of highlightery shade from the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Trio. So I feel like it just gives again like a very kind of like dewy luminous look. One of my favorite 
parts of kind of transitioning to spring makeup is I tend to like a really bright pop of color on the cheeks. And you guys know that I love cream blushes. I feel like I use them in almost all of my videos, which I really like for winter when my skin seems particularly dry and dehydrated, but lately, I've really been reaching for powder blushes, and I know that this showed up in my disappointing products video not because of the product itself and its performance, but because of some of the ingredients in it, and it's the Physician's Formula Happy Booster Glow and Mood Boosting Blush and Warm. I've just been wearing this every single day, and I love the way that it looks. A couple other options that I wanted to mention that actually aren't green, but I do tend to reach for them a lot in the spring are two of the Chanel Joux Contrast blushes that I've had for a really long time and I'll never get rid of. I will use these up because they're really expensive. Um, I have Reflex, which is my peachy, it's really like the only peach blush that I have and very, very pretty. And then I also have Turbulent, which is kind of a extremely hot pink, perfect for a bright pop of color on the cheeks. I'm going to just apply this right on the apples of my cheeks with a Sigma brush. This is the Sigma F10. I also think the lasting power of this blush is really, really good. It's definitely still on by the end of the day and I like it's lasted through workouts and lots of stuff so I kind of want to get more of these uh, but I'm sort of trying to hold myself back. I don't think that I look too dewy or luminous or over the top so I am going to add a little bit of cream highlighter and I'm going to go for an oldie but a goodie. It's the RMS Living Luminizer. I'm just going to dab this on the tops of my cheeks and kind of under my brow bone and inner corners of the eyes in Cupid's bow. And I'm just gonna take my beauty blender and kind of uh, try and work that into the skin. Yeah, I feel like this just makes everything blend together like so beautifully. Loving it. I'm gonna power through my brows per usual because it's the same thing. It's the All Natural Face Vegan Brow Wax and the Tarte Medium Brown Brow Powder. And I do this a lot. So cue hopefully interesting music that I find for this video. And I'll be back for the eye makeup. to my favorite part, and I don't typically get so excited about eye makeup, but you would probably be hard pressed to find someone who doesn't get excited about applying the By Terry Ombre Black Stars. I have Misty Rock, I've worn it in my last two videos, I used it in my five minute face tag, and it's just beautiful. So I'm going to apply a light layer of eye primer, which I typically haven't been when I've been wearing this, but I kind of want to see how it wears with an eye primer. So. I'm going to apply just a little bit of the Bare Minerals Prime Time Eyelid Primer and then apply this all over the lid directly from the stick and blend it in sort of up into the crease with my fingers and you'll see how beautiful it looks and applies and it's everything magical in the world. personally don't like to fuss with applying more shadows. I like that this is just kind of like a one swipe blend in. Sorry, my lips are really dry. Um, and that's kind of it. It's like super easy. You could put a crease color in if you wanted, 
um, either another one of the by Terry Ombre Black Stars like Bronze Moon or Velvet Orchid or Brown Perfection kind of to deepen it up. But I'm just going to leave it like this. What I do want to do is I don't want to do liquid liner, uh, but I do want to kind of give some definition to the lash lines. In addition to using my Tarte Skinny Smolder Eyes Eye Pencil and Onyx to line the upper waterline, which is going to give a lot of definition, I'm going to take a little bit of the black shouter, black shouter. I am going to take a little bit of the black shadow from the Jane Iredale Daytime Eyeshadow Kit, and I'm going to kind of smudge it into the just very close to the lash line outer part. This is a Sephora smudge brush. So I'm gonna take a little black shadow on that and kind of just put it right here on the outer part of the lashes. And then I'm going to sort of blend it in a little bit with a MAC pencil brush, 217. just a little bit of the kind of taupey shade from the Jane Iredale palette underneath my eyes for a little bit of definition. And a little bit of the sort of shadow and liner has transferred down, which I'm also okay with. I don't like perfect makeup. I really like makeup to look kind of like a little bit messy and sort of lived in and kind of like, I guess, edgy. I don't, I really respect the kind of perfectly blended, blown out, smoky eyes that people like Jaclyn Hill and stuff do, but it's just not really me. So I kind of like something that's a little bit more um, je ne sais quoi. Anyway, I'm gonna take a little bit of a gray eye pencil, just a little bit in the lower waterline. Um, it's less harsh than black, but I feel like gray goes a little bit better with this look as opposed to bronze, which is what I typically do. So I'm just using uh, an eye pencil from Kiko. We're going to curl the lashes with my Kevin Aquan eyelash curler, and then I am going to, for the first time today, use my Lily Lolo mascara that came in the last Pettivore box. I talked about this in my last Mercedes Shops video, how I had not high hopes for it at all. I got a bunch of comments from people who were like, it's amazing, it's really volumizing, and I was like, whoa, okay, clearly I should have tried it before I judged it. Uh, so I'm going to use it for the first time today as my first mascara. And then we'll see how I'm feeling. I have three other open mascaras right now. And I'm going to see how this applies and then make a decision about what mascara to use next. Yep, that is quite nice. <laughs> That's one coat on one eye. I think it's really freaking nice. God, why was I such a snarky bitch about it? All right, I'm going in for a second coat of this. I think it's amazing. Okay, so that's two coats of Lily Lolo. It's pretty dry, uh, but seems to be relatively buildable. I'm going to add a coat of the Bare Minerals Flawless Definition and let's hope my lashes don't turn into a mono lash, which is always a risk when you're kind of overloading. Like I tend to do. Okay, now the last thing we have to do is lips and I'm going to do my sort of boring, but I love this combination. I'm going to work a bit of the Gressa Lip Boost in Bare into my lips, and then I'm going to go over it with a swipe of the Bite Beauty Lipstick in Musk, which is just my favorite everyday lipstick color. Okay, 
Okay guys, so this is the finished look. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my kind of dewy spring makeup look. I think that it's just uh, really pretty and fresh and not overdone for during the day, but you could easily amp this up to make it an evening look as well. I'll see you in another beauty video really soon. All info about products that I used will be down in the description bar below. And also feel free to leave me ideas for videos. I really appreciate when people do that and I do listen and try and get those videos in the works. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.